Well, Tristan, I can't take all the credit because you said you saw a lion laying in the bush upon your arrival back towards the Sabi sand. But I suppose I better introduce myself before these cats do disappear into the thicket. My name is Taylor, and of course on camera with me today is Sebastian. And remember, this is indeed live and interactive safari, so if you have any questions for us, hashtag safari live on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. But it seems as though the cubs are starting to move now. I suppose we could call them sub-adults. They're old enough just walking around so there's only three adult lionesses here I wonder where the two others are it's not uncommon that we do see them splitting up like this breakaway sort of prides well I don't think you can really call them a breakaway pride then maybe they're just taking a break from each other but they end up always coming back to each other or they could have just got up and moved into the thicket already we may have missed them oh it does look like there might be one more adult no no it's not it's a youngster they're just getting such big heads now off you go fluffy well they're just moving into the shady spots like we have been discussing it's particularly warm especially for our winters it's not that we are not used to having the hot days but today is an exceptional day so I'm I'm not surprised that we actually just seeing the lions just up like this and I think that they will go flat and lay underneath some trees hopefully I'm wrong though I wouldn't mind being wrong here comes the next one here comes my favorite little girl She's got the very, very dark eyes, just like Amber Eyes has. And she's growing up. She's actually grown quite a bit since I last saw her. I just got a quick glimpse as she stood up. She looked towards me, and that's how I was able to identify her. So she's one of the youngest lions in the pride. Well, she is the youngest lion in the pride. She was the only one that survived from the teddy bear litter, if I'm not mistaken. The other two, unfortunately, succumbed to the white muscle disease, which was terrible really really terrible the lionesses heads are still up every now and then and they're grooming themselves so maybe they move around now ellie who is only six years old and all the way from the uk you're wondering if the lions purr like your cat does well not like your cat does there is one cat that makes a interesting purring sound and that's the the cheetah it almost sounds like a motorbike it is such a a real rumble not so so the cats here especially the lions can't purr like that but they make other different types of sounds so they can roar which is qu quite cool that's something that we always liked here and that's what they were doing the whole of last night and this morning it doesn't look like there's birmingham boys here but they were here they were with the pride at one point and sounded like at about it was about half past nine, maybe ten o'clock. It sounded like the entire Nguhumba Pride and, and some Birmingham boys were calling. Now there's one more. We're just waiting for one more. It's going to get up. It's not going to sit here on its own. So as soon as it stands up, we will watch it walk away. Come on. Up you get. It's looking back at the adults and the other siblings. You know, the shade that they were sitting in is not really not doing the job of keeping them cool on a day like today as the sun is getting higher in the sky it's just creeping over the tops of the trees but there you can see the little one i think you've actually i think there might be two oh no you're down there i, I couldn't work out where sebastian was pointing the camera for a moment i was like i thought we only had one and that lion is looking towards me and that one's got its head back here we go here comes the last one as I was telling you now I've been trying to figure out how we can get in there we might be able to take the same route that the lions are walking on because I did go all the way around but there was no gap absolutely no gap to squeeze in but we'll go around we'll see what they get up to and like I said I'm not gonna sit here for hours and hours and be patient with the lions because I know what lions can be like they'll sleep they'll just sleep for the entire three hours and I'd rather go and find some other animals that would perhaps be more active. Maybe we find a herd of elephants somewhere. That would be quite nice to watch them if we get them splashing about in the water or buffalo wallowing around. But definitely not going to be watching lions sleep today. And especially because they're in such a thick spot that we probably aren't even going to be able to make them out let's see if we can get another view also this drainage line that they're heading into is treacherous I don't think we'll make it 
Where are you going now? Cats, please don't take me on a wild goose chase this afternoon. That's exactly what they're doing. I can't even see them anymore, can you? Are they still moving? Okay, let's go. We'll go the other way around then. I'm just gonna reverse back. Ah, uh -uh, so take me two seconds. Ooh. And I just pulled my earpiece out, hang on. Knobthorn got it. So luckily for us, there's another track. Whee! Oh, bump, sorry. Just gotta catch up quickly here. Now this is the problem is, due to the fantastic camouflage that a lion has in this long golden grass, and it gets quite tall going and then they're gonna completely disappear. So now we just need to catch up. Luckily there's an old road. I think we've had a couple of sightings in here before over the last six months. So there's a worn track that should take us out to the open to the next gap quite quickly where those lions are walking. So they've actually jumped quite far ahead of us. Kitty cats, please, not today. I think if we go, I think I saw one lion next to the clock. There's one, and there was another one that was walking up ahead. So I just wanna make sure if you got her. Yeah. See, Sebastian's sitting nice and high. Oh yes, that's the one I saw. So here's, I wonder, you know what? I think they're just gonna follow her. We might as well stick up with the leader of the pack, eh? Here's some cubs, we can have quickly have a look at them. That's a good shady spot, again, it is tough, it's going to be tough to do. Or, even that lot might actually be better than the one sitting on the left because you can actually see their heads over the tops of the grass. These guys are laying flat. Like we always say, we've given them our own collective noun, a carpet of lions. Typically it's a pride of lions. But nice to see them, Gormas. I know that they're not looking in the... Even though they're thin, it doesn't mean that they're not in good condition. So don't let that worry you. These animals are resilient and the hunger will drive them. And maybe that's what's happening right now. There's a bit of a breeze that's starting to pick up. So it is starting, right now it's just starting to cool everything down. So they could go out on a hunt, who knows? Where's this lioness going now? I can't see her. Now David, you're wondering if the boy cubs will bully the lionesses as they get older. No, not too badly. So it's not quite like what happens with elephants, because we see that often. The young males, um, as they start getting quite excited with life, they then turn their frustrations to the females and the younger members of the pride. That doesn't typically happen here. Those lionesses will stand together, together and give those young boys a hiding. If, they, if, if it needs to be like that. Um, so they don't really tolerate anything like that. I mean, even the lionesses don't tolerate the dominant males sometimes. We've seen many altercations between lionesses. And there we go, sitting up. See, they keep looking for this other lioness who's just up in front. I, I can't see her anymore, but at least we're sort of halfway between the two. But it is gonna be tricky if they go down in here. I don't know how. We're going to navigate around. So actually what I'm going to do is why you watch them walk. I'm going to open my phone and put the GPS on. Just so I can try and figure out exactly where they're going to go and where they're going to pop out. What's going to be the best route. Without us having to go through ridiculous terrain and break a car. It's very easy. Obviously these types of things happen often when you go out on safari. There's absolutely nothing you can do, and you've seen the vegetation we have to go through if you want to follow these animals. And this long grass really doesn't help, and that's exactly what happened to Ali last night. That's often why I stand up. You've seen me driving and standing, and you probably think, my goodness, Taylor, what are you doing now? And it's just to try and spot those stumps. They don't look like they really want to go anywhere, and it's probably because they're feeling lethargic, they're tired, they don't have any extra energy they're now cutting into those valuable fat and muscle reserves that you know they well they don't want to it's just because they haven't had a meal so they keep sitting down every point while well, the cubs are starting to follow one two three four five six so all six are here it's just triple checking so it must be amber eyes and the youngest and gohuma lioness that are off Driving up to leopards, you're wondering if it's your imagination or do those lions look underweight? It's normal. 
This is so typical of the big cats. Remember, they're opportunistic feeders. So they're not the greatest hunters. They're not so successful as wild dogs are. They've tried to make a couple of attempts, but haven't uh, managed to grab anything. So, so yes, they are looking thin. They do need to eat. And hopefully today will be the day. And as long as they're standing up and moving around, we'll try and stick with them. The adults are going again. Which means, I don't know what the cubs are doing. Because if adults are going to go on a hunt, these little ones might be, they're not really joining in though just yet. They still just would be observing for the sidelines. Oh, uh, here comes another adult. So now we've got four lionesses. Can you see her? So maybe the fifth lioness is still here. Here she comes. Hello, girl. Who have we got here? This looks like the youngest. Is it? No, I can't tell the difference. I just know Amber Eyes, but she's got a really... Yeah, I think it is. This No, this is not Amber Eyes. No, no. She's got lovely golden eyes. I'm just looking at her, her nose. It's quite pink, but there is one lioness in the pride that has got a speckled pink nose. Okay, well then I'm going to say that probably all five lionesses are here, if this is the case. It's very rarely, unless one of them is off mating with another with a male, with one of the Birmingham boys, which I know there was a mating pair in Bivol's Hook over the last two days. And it was an Unkuhuma lioness. Rexon didn't specify which lioness it was. So, so maybe it's just four. It's hard to tell. We'll just have to wait and see, seeing as though we keep getting surprises coming out of the long grass. But nonetheless, I can tell you, this is great to have a lion moving during the heat of the day. But she's obviously realized that the adults, or the other lionesses, have got up and on the move. You don't look very impressed today. She keeps pulling faces. Oh, she's got an injury on the inside of her leg. Look at that. Looks like a bite mark. Ooh, she's got some, and on, the, and on her rump. She's got some serious injury. She's not limping, but I think when they were fresh, that would have been very sore. We'll see if we can get a view. I wonder if she just hasn't been fighting. Because there's a scratch on the back. Yeah. I haven't I haven't had a good view of them. But I, I think I remember the last time I saw the Uncle as one was slightly limping. Maybe it was her. It was also completely dark. But it's healed up now. And I can imagine when those wounds were fresh, that would have been a little bit on the painful side. But she looks good. Wow. This is going to be exciting trying to maneuver through here. So while I do this and catch up with the lionesses of the Nkuhuma pride, let's go across to Tristan. He's arrived at Treehouse Dam.